Hello and welcome to the Craft Man Show. My name is your host, the Craft Man. And in today's video, we're going to look at how to build your own bead box inspired by beer making stuff. We're going to build with some cheap materials. And we might even bring some technological advancements courtesy of Boiler Hobby Tan. A bead box. This has been on Craft Men's list for quite some time. Bill making stuff does a phenomenal bead body. In fact, he invented the term as far as I know. And I like the concept of a bead body because it's literally just beads and some wire and some glue. And just like that, we got us a leg. Pretty happy with that, actually. Uh, can't help but wonder what beer making stuff would think about that leg right there. Yeah, the beads, I mean, it's, you put me all the way here for this, really. No, I'm just, beer I'm playing, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add more. Uh, I'm gonna add some more things too. All right, let's make us a fully fledged bead box. This is going to be a scratch beer. And anytime I do a scratch beer, I like to go ahead and look for interesting parts. Even when I have no idea how I'm going to use them. The only idea I've got right now is to start by making some teeth. And I'm using this thimble I found a while ago to uh, bend our teeth into a curvature. And now I got some tacky putty and I'm going to use it as a head prototype. Later we can sculpt it out of epoxy clay. But let's use actual beads for the eyeballs. Since it's supposed to be a bead by, you know. Psych. We're not going to do that. Instead of sculpting the head... Let's use a bead. Look at these old resistors I found. The resistors will give us skinny wire legs, which will add some contrast because I want the upper body to be bulky. And 
and the legs to be like little uh, skin little bird legs you know holding up that big body i think that would be neat also we need a skinny wire so that our beads will fit I'm using some epoxy sculpt epoxy clay to fill in larger gaps. You could also use baking soda and super glue, but this way it gives a little more control, a little more time to position the legs. Now it's time to arm this gentleman. I took me some copper wire and ran a torch across it, which made it soft and bendable, easier to pose that way. But first, I found a piece that might look better for this leg. Look at the, that make it look more like a pair of boots. I thought it looked kind of neat. And for this diorama, The Art of Mascard is a book I decided to look at for inspiration. I wanted it to have a really nice pose, I write P-O-S-E. I usually don't focus on that. I usually just make things standing, you know, like just kind of like uh, Jeff Bezos, but I wanted this one to have some real energy to it. Right now I'm playing around with arm ideas, just trying things out till we get something that, you know, looks like it might work. You know what? Instead of using these pre-made claw hands, let's get us a bead and build the little finger fingers using even smaller beads and wire. for building material. It can easily be cut, glued, textured, and painted. We're gonna really use foam later. Let's finish out our first character with some little details. Embellishments, like maybe some shoulder pads. Yeah, and how about a little chest piece? I'm gonna use the same little finding from earlier to make us some armor for the back. Yeah, there we go. Now it's time to build us a shield from some old oak scrap wood. Cutting a wooden bead in half to make us a little a shield boss B O S S. That's the smaller dome that's in the middle of the shield. And I'm going to paint it metallic, so that means it's got to be pretty smooth. Remember your dust mask. Found me a little piece of wood right there I'm going to use as a base. Here's your quick tip. If you want to uh, cut you a rectangle or a square, you know, out of a piece of wood, what I like to do is just find the appropriate size bit this is called a arsenal bit. 
Man, just go chop, chop, chop. And then just chisel it out the rest of the way. That's how it is to it. We're going to put a battery pack in here basically. And I'm going to explain why that's going to be a little surprise. Now we need some type of uh, monster. Some kind of formidable opponent. Or we can just build one. I've been wanting to use these little dollar store bender tools. Look at that. Now to reveal a big secret, a uh, trick called second gloves. Look at it. Now I can reposition my camera. I made us a little foam template right there. That way we can cut a bunch of uh, little shell or armor type pieces. These will go on the back of the creature. Now we don't want totally smooth pieces, so we're gonna use a trick I learned from Studson Studio. Little bottle of aluminum far is all it takes to get some uh, surface variation and texture. Here's a before and after. This will show up a lot better once we paint it and black wash it. Now I'm using an aluminum rod to kind of form it into a template because I feel like we need a, a design on the shell pieces, you know, to make a sure impression, put it down on a hard surface while tapping. Now I feel like it's starting to look more intentional, like something you would find in nature, but hope you would not find this in nature, to be honest. Now we're just giving extra texture selectively. See that? What do y'all think? Now I'm so, so ready to glue all this together, but uh, I decided to first add us a little, like a little rubber uh, line going up the sides. I figured maybe, you know, it could be a guide for gluing the shell pieces on there and can work as a little extra detail. I used a somewhat significant amount of CA glue for this episode. Now I want to glue the backside pieces, finally. 
because don't y'all think that's going to tie it together? Look, hope so. But let's save that for just a few more seconds and do a little wood carving. This is a piece of basswood, which is real easy to carve. I wanted to make us some uh, little legs, I guess. Legs, you know, which can combine with these grommets I found earlier. It's the little details that add up. It's time to prime. Priming is when it all comes together, all the little different color pieces and everything. But look, our B characters are defenseless. Oh yeah, I made a second B character. Forgot to tell y'all that. To make a sword, I cut up some polystyrene and then fastened to the edges using a little wet sanding technique. Something like that. I hope that seeing how sloppy craftsman's work is inspires you to craft something way better than I do. Because you can. I'm for real. And it don't have to cost a lot of money. Watch this right here. This is bark from a pine tree. Did you know that tree bark can be used to simulate stones? You know, rocket type terrain landscapes. This is a technique I learned from fellow crafters in the modern railroad world. A little epoxy sculpt. Okay, right now it looks still like tree bark, but that's gonna change once we paint it, I think. I'm real generous with the CA glue uh, because I know it's gonna help reinforce this flake of tree bark. The baking soda and CA glue, in addition to making the base stronger, is gonna add like a filler. And these little stones help break things up and give a little variety. Uh, now we need to paint it, and this is where I get just a slight bit, a little bit, a little amount, a little nervous about it, you know. 
I know, like for example, I want a light underbelly, kind of like a crawfish. You know how they got that lightest color in the, in the shell. I would like for that to be something kind of popping, kind of popping. I'm considering these a, a, a amphibious bead box. So I went with some amphibious look here, color ideas. Craftman is not a painter. Not, not really, to be honest. So here go you some shots of sloppy brushwork. Paint that needs to be thinned. Or, and paint that's maybe too thin. The Peace to Resistance. Check it, check it, check it out. My good friend Boiler Hobby Time graciously sent me some of these little flexible LED uh, filaments right there. Pretty fantastic. A craftsman is not very electrical. Uh, I'm just a mild conductor, so I barely know how to do this, but positive and the positive, negative to a uh, negative, and uh, yeah, just about boom shakalaka like that right there. I use the brass rod as both the central conductor and as a support for the electroluminescent wires. A touch of super glue holds the EL wires in place. We simulate a fire blast using the shape. And some little fibers right there to give us some volumetric properties to it. Boyla taught me that one as well. Thank you, Boyla. Yeah. I've never done this before, and so I'm afraid to just glue, glue, glue and mess it up. But I remembered the techniques we learned back in the needle felting episode. I said, if it works for shaping a flame, that would be just triumphant. The idea is to push the fibers into themselves using the barbed needle, basically, causing the fibers to tangle and to hold together. The last thing to do is to paint it with some black 5.75 and call it sufficient.
hope y'all enjoyed it. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for clicking on my video. I appreciate that. And sincerely, thank you to my direct supporter. By the way, I forgot to tell you that if you are uh, use a heat gun, you get rid of the frayed edges, you know. Until next time, I love y'all and keep on steady crafting. All right.